Go to a normal grocery store and look at the food that's on the shelves. The amount of artificial non-food that's in our food these days is pretty breathtaking. I uh, have this uh, soft drink that I fished out of our cupboard here, and the list of ingredients looks like you need a prescription to buy a can of pop these days. It's funny because my wife and I found out just by doing this little exercise that we eat quite healthy. I had to do some looking to find some artificial junk. But anyway, it's there. <clears throat> you consume all this stuff every day and, uh, well, who knows what effect it has. No wonder we end up with things like cancer or whatever. Well, um, as the difficulty of my, sh my search um, proved, there are ways around that. You can not eat junk. It's not everyone's option, but there are options out there. Likewise, um, my TV over there, there's TV shows on there that are junk. Um, it's, uh, it's the sort of thing that's either going to depress you, sicken you, um, infuriate you, or otherwise ruin your day. You'll note that you can't hear the TV because it's not on. It's not very often on uh, because, you know, I have the option of changing the channel when uh, some particularly nauseating TV show comes on. The same thing is true with depression. Um, when you end up with a disorder of that nature, you have, uh, you have the option of not putting yourself in a toxic situation, of not thinking toxic thoughts, of not thinking things, or developing thought patterns that are pathological and are going to increase the likelihood of you uh, succumbing to depression, whatever that might actually mean in your individual case. Um, some people might say, well, that's because you're, f you're refusing to face reality. Well, no. Um, drinking this stuff, um, knowing full well of what it, can be, what it can do to me, is making me implicit in my own illness that I get as a result of this, even if it's just obesity because of all the sugar. It's my own fault. Um, I, if I cut that stuff out of my diet, I'm probably going to be healthier. So if I'm depressed and I deliberately seek out and pursue um, a philosophy that is going to add to my pathological condition, um, is going to validate it, then in a certain way I am implicit in my own mental illness. Um, if I end up uh, getting worse. So the depressive who seeks out a philosophy like antinatalism um, is in a sense implicit in their own pathological condition. Um, they're people who are stressed, who deliberately seek other reasons to be stressed rather than doing something about the actual stress that they that they feel or in the case of the depressive, rather than trying to deal with the illness and recognizing it as an illness, they say that depression is seeing things the way they the way they really are. That's like saying that um, cancer is normal and non-cancer is some sort of um, deviation from <laughs> from normal. Or in a bizarre way, it's almost saying that cancer is health. So. Um, I tend to say that, uh, that people who um, have this pathological condition, depression, need to be aware of it. Going out for a glass of beer in a bar might be okay for most of us. For those of us who are recovering alcoholics, it's not good. That beer is poison to you. As I say, I like to read novels that are really depressing or weird or um, otherwise bleak and even hellish. But for some reason, it doesn't 
color my view of the world. When I read an H.P. Lovecraft novel, I don't actually assume that I'm living in that kind of a world. I don't seek validation in it. I just, I guess I get some kind of weird kick out of it um, that doesn't spill over into my regular life. Um, but to some people, they really ought to leave these sorts of novels alone. H.P. Lovecraft isn't for everybody. It'll scare the hell out of some people. And it'll keep people awake at nights or make people paranoid or whatever. Don't read it. It's not good for you. Um, it's not a question of there being unpleasant truths out there. It's a question of what's good for you and what ain't. Um, remember, depression is a severe pathological condition that can kill you. At the very least, it can destroy your life, and it can severely impact the lives of everyone else around you. And yes, it's a contagious disease. Um, so, I don't understand why people say that I'm undervaluing depression here. If anything, I think that the antinatalist set, the morose or um, uh, I suppose morbid antinatalist set seem to me to be underestimating and undervaluing depression's devastating menace. To some people, some things are poison. They cannot uh, consume them or they will get a toxic reaction. To some people, negative thoughts are toxic. They have to either manage them very carefully or avoid them completely. There's enough worrying in this world. Somebody else will do you worrying for you. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Interesting. Um, somebody else can deal with all the horrible things in the world. But there's that old saying, you're no good to the world if you're no good to yourself. In other words, if you're a wreck, if you're stricken with this paralytic condition called depression, how on earth are you going to do anything about all the horrible things in the world that have made you depressed? Before you can do anything, you've got to get better. Then you can devote your entire life, every bit of energy you've got, to trying to counteract how bad this existence is. But again, the, the first step is to get better. Um, if you accept a pathological condition as normal, then in a sense, um, you've really got no one to blame but yourself. <laughs> Thank you.